wherever you may be and however you may be listening. We're on iHeartRadio. We're on Fox Sports Radio. We're on FS1 for what will be the most exciting night of the year in the NBA. I kid you not tonight. Ping Pong Lottery and Warriors Blazers Open Game 1. Joy Taylor is joining me. I am so excited for it. Not only tonight, but today's show. This is a... I can't believe how excited... No games last night. I watched (laughs) hockey. Went out with a fan for dinner. Got kind of a night off. I'm so excited for tonight. There are a lot of things on the line tonight. People have already started, you know, praying and lighting their candles. I'm I'm all on board on the uh, conspiracy. Okay. Well, I I saw this morning. I saw this story. Let's start here. Keep the number one pick if you're the Knicks or trade it. What? Trade for what? Anthony Davis? He's boring. Not all stars are fascinating. Carl Anthony Towns is boring. Anthony Davis, been in the league seven years. I don't rush to a TV to watch Anthony Davis. I rush to a TV to watch Zion in college, where I don't know 95% of the players. The kid's a star. This is A-Rod to the Yankees. This is Jim Harbaugh to Michigan. This is Kevin Garnett to the Celtics. It's Shaq to the Lakers. When you get a star and you put him with a huge brand, you don't, from an ownership standpoint... And I would never be a meddling owner. I'd walk downstairs and say, fellas, eh, trade not happening. Zion is staying. Not all stars are fascinating. Okay, Steph Curry is crazy fun. LeBron's bigger than life. KD's a personality. Uh, James Harden's controversial. I think he's interesting. Giannis can be captivating. But, you know, it's not like Kawhi. It's not like I'm rushing to a TV set for Anthony Davis, Carl Anthony Towns. Zion to the Knicks is a once-in-a-franchise opportunity. It's bigger than Ewing in 1985 because of social media. You can talk about kids now 24-7. You don't watch a game, go to bed, and wait for the next game to talk about them. The emergence of opinion shows, the emergence of cable television, the emergence of Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. This is bigger than Ewing in 1985. College basketball no longer furnishes us with known commodities. That We finally meet John ja Morant for March for a game, and then he's gone. Used to be Ewing came back three years. Yeah, I mean, Ralph Sampson, Leitner, dominating players. Duncan came back for three and four years. Now college basketball is an airport. You land, and you're looking for the next flight to get to the next city. It's the apartment complex. Nobody with talent wants to long-term live in one. You want to buy a house or a condo. I read a story this morning. The Knicks would see more than a 70% increase in their sponsor values the minute they get the number one pick. I don't want to hear a trade for Anthony Davis. I'll get to why in a second, but the first reason why is he's not captivating. Nobody's rushing to their TV set to watch Pelican games. You were rushing to your TV set. I saw the numbers. To watch college basketball this year, the kid can also plug and play right now. He'll be very good very early, and he also has a magnetism where I wouldn't be shocked if he ended up in a New York veterans like, I don't want to play with that guy. There are a lot of guys who want to play with LeBron early. Zion is in a very unique class. Eric Lindros in hockey, Bryce Harper, Tiger Woods, LeBron James. Yes, he is. He's in that class. When LeBron entered the league, there was no Instagram. Facebook wasn't this big. Twitter wasn't this big. Cable TV, I mean, it's it's opinion shows, talk radio. It's all, it's big, it's robust. You know, Bryce Harper's only a 270 hitter. How many big series has Bryce Harper won? Not even the best player in baseball. He has just signed a, you know, a $350 million contract. From a marketing standpoint, you just don't get this. You, you, you just do not get this. Do you think tonight, this trade talk, do you think tonight when the Knicks... When, when everybody's sitting in bars around New York and they're going to take shots all over, right? Like you'll see the video. And if the Knicks won this and all those bars explode, do you think they're exploding because they're all saying, wow, I can't wait to trade for Anthony Davis? No. People in New York this year, I saw the ratings, watch more Duke basketball than they ever had. Why? Because they like Coach K? No. Zion. And they have a 14% chance to land the number one pick. I don't want to hear about trading him. You don't, you don't get this opportunity. You just don't get it. And even if he's just like Bryce Harper good or Eric Lindros, which is a star, 
but doesn't win at the end of the season as much as you thought. It's all worth it. Because Anthony Davis isn't winning either, and he's not captivating. Let me shift to this. Speaking of New York, I saw this story yesterday. Got off the show. Kevin Durant is going to miss game one, and it appears he's going to miss game two. And he may miss game three. And you know what I thought about? I thought about the Knicks. When KD got hurt, it created this fascinating storyline with Steph and the Rockets. It made it a different series. Right in the middle of the series, the series got even more interesting. Oh, my God, the dynasty's over. Oh, Lord, can they win without? Oh, is Harden not going to be able to? I thought it made, this, it made the series more captivating. There was more drama. And everybody acknowledges, including Marcus Thompson writing the KD book, that Kevin Durant can be swayed. He was on our show a month ago. Listen to this. I'm not buying that at the last moment he's sitting at a meeting with somebody and he can't be swayed. Either way, to stay or go. I just Because that's his personality. Yeah. He could think it's done right now, whether that's staying or going. I still think later on, like, he can be swayed. Like, he's a guy, he feels everything. He sits in the room. He's present. He's got he's to weigh this stuff. We, we still have three or four more series if they win a championship of data to insert into this equation, right? Like, I don't know. I don't know if even if he thinks he's he knows the answer, I don't think he knows the answer. I'm not buying it. Okay. If that is true, and Marcus Thompson knows KD as well as anybody in the media, I'm just going to throw this scenario at you. Because, you know, with Kyrie and Kawhi and Kevin Durant, it's like every day the, the news changes, right? Oh, Ka Kawhi had a big shot. He's going to stay in Canada. Oh, all right. Uh, Kyrie's recruiting people. Oh, all right. I saw a picture of KD celebrating the Warriors when he's staying. Oh, all right. So I'm going to throw this scenario out. Let's say... Kevin Durant, and I saw this story yesterday, misses games one, games two, and then the Warriors win both games against Portland at home. And the Warriors say, why, why play him for game three? What's the point? He's 90%. Let's just, and then they play game three, and the Warriors win game three in Portland. They're still really good. We all know this, 30 and four when KD doesn't play. Well, then you just don't play him in the series. There's no reason to play KD in the series. So the Warriors win tonight without KD. And then they win again. Which that's not unheard of. It's hard to win there. And they decide not to play him for game three. And as they win, why play him in the series? Just get him healthy for the finals. He had nothing to prove, right? And then KD returns for the finals. And Milwaukee beats them. And Milwaukee beat the Warriors by 20 in Oracle earlier this year. They match up pretty well with them. No freebies at the bucket with Giannis. That's why I thought of the New York Knicks. That would be the impetus to go, okay, Katie's out. Because that narrative would be, they're like 36 and four without KD. They're, they're worse with it. That would move him. So I just, when I saw that story this morning, KD to miss game one and probably game two, first thing I thought of was the Knicks. Because I've said all along, I don't think it makes any sense to go to the Knicks. I would never tell my wife, honey, we're moving to the East Coast. My wife would say, oh, more money. No, less. Oh, better company. No, way worse. Why? I just want to be the man. Uh, she punched me in the forehead. So I don't, I, I don't really get the move. But beat Golden State without him. Just beat Houston without him. Come back, lose to Milwaukee then I think he's gone. Now, I want to throw this out to you. This happened 10 minutes ago. This happened 10 minutes ago. An NBA veteran, you know how they call it, uh, Joy, sliding into your DMs? You know when people do that? Somebody yes. you follow, you follow them, they slide into your DMs. So someone slid in your DM with some small J journalism? An NBA veteran player. I follow all sorts of people. An NBA player, very, very connected. Been around this league for a long time. Told me 15 minutes ago, KD to the Knicks is 100% done, and he has made calls to other players. Ooh. 
I do not have it double sourced. <laughs> I don't. I'll just tell you, I don't. But he's somebody I respect. He's smart. And I'm going to put it out there. Because I believe this is what we call on our show, double sourced, big J journalism. Right. Single sourced, small J journalism. Sometimes that gets run over by a truck. <laughs> so I don't have it double sourced, but I got it 10 minutes ago. That's interesting. I'm telling I I told you all along. I think he's going. You, you know, you you are on the going thing. I am I am a one percenter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, coming up next. Coming up next. Um, there are. I'm going to count this real quick. Eleven teams with a chance to win the lottery tonight. Now I'm not going to count Charlotte, Miami, and Sacramento. They they have one percent chance. So there's a, there's eleven other teams. There. There are five or six teams I'd be really interested to see Zion land. New York, number one. But if he lands, a, a, there, are, there are some teams, it would be a complete buzzkill tonight. So I'll tell you the five teams, I actually have six. I actually think it'd be kind of fascinating, and I'll put them in order. That is coming up next. Doug Gottlieb this hour. Bill Raftery next hour. He must have done 20 games this year for Duke. Chris Haynes, Rick Barry, too. Any coach or GM will tell you the foundation of any great team starts with talent. Okay. I love Denver. They're not talented enough to be in the Western Conference Finals yet. Golden State is. Portland is. Milwaukee is. Toronto. Same rule applies when it comes to hiring. You need the top talent. But you don't have the endless resources to find it. Luckily, Zip Recruiter does. They scout talent for you. One click sends your job to over 100 of the web's leading job boards, and ZipRecruiter does not stop there. They have powerful matching technology, which not only scans thousands of resumes to find the right people, but then invites them to apply to your job. And ZipRecruiter is so effective, four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site within the first day. Right now, my listeners can try it for free. ZipRecruiter is the smartest way to hire. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash H-E-R-D. ZipRecruiter.com slash H-E-R-D.